I wasn't born this way. I wasn't born this way. I remember being in a SEAL platoon and looking around going, wait a second, what are we supposed to be doing right now? I remember that. I remember as the quote, instinct developed. Well, what wasn't instinct that was developing, it was leadership that was developing. It's not a supernatural thing. It's the way you think. It's the way that I think. It's what my mind does when I have a decision or a problem to solve or a maneuver to direct that's not intuition. I don't have a superpower. I ran this loop. I ran these two loops, basically. And if you run them quick and you don't get stuck in a rut, you're going to see more and you will be able to lead correctly. I got asked a question um, while we were up at the council up in Washington State. A couple of the... uh, a couple of the attendees at the council, which is a very small group, very intense sessions we had up there for a couple of days. But a couple of the attendees had heard some of the stories um, from Leif and Andrew, and they were stories about me. And and cool stories made me sound pretty cool, right? Um, thanks, Leif and Andrew, for making me sound cool. But, but you know, the, just basic uh, stuff. But then these two attendees kind of, We were talking afterwards, um, and they said, "You know, you you have really good you had you have really good intuition, meaning that I had this sort of instinct of what to do in tough situations. You know, got this really good intuition, leadership intuition, and I kind of you know I was like thinking, yeah, that's you're damn right, and I kind of told them that, like, yeah." You know, and I appreciated it, appreciated it, pre- appreciated Leif and Andrew making me look good. And, and then I appreciated the fact that these guys saw how just an intuitive leader, natural leader I was. But even as they were saying it to me and I got over the, 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 the four milliseconds of thinking I was cool. And, and then I thought to myself, well, that's freaking not cool at all. It's actually not cool at all. Because if I'm just good at leading because I have good intuition, well then what what good is that? It's good for me and it's good for my immediate team, but it's not, I, I, I can't help anybody else, right? Because what's good is it for people that wanna lead better if it's just, oh yeah, Jocko's, you know, he's got good instinct, doesn't help. So I started thinking about that, I was getting a little paranoid. <laughs> And I'm thinking, well, okay, well, what actually is it? Because I know, well, this is what I had to decipher because I'm sitting there, you know, I got the little boost of ego of like, well, yeah, you know, I've got really good instincts. But then I'm like, wait a second. I, I, I wasn't born this way. I wasn't, wasn't born this way. I remember being in a SEAL platoon and looking around going, wait a second, what are we supposed to be doing right now? I remember that. I remember as the quote, instinct developed. Well, what wasn't instinct that was developing, it was leadership that was developing. It's not a, it's not a supernatural thing. It, it's the way you think. It's the way that I think. It's what my mind does when I have a decision or a problem to solve or a maneuver to direct when I have to lead I'm going to what is my mind going to do so I okay what is my mind going to do this isn't just instinct this isn't just intuition there is a protocol that is taking place what is it okay you can probably guess the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to detach but I'm not just going to detach I'm not just going to take a step back there's more to it because taking a step back only gives you one perspective, one other perspective. So I don't just take a step back, I'm gonna move around. The, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna oscillate. And I don't know if you have this in, the, in when you're flying an aircraft, Dave. When you're diving, we, 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 the type of diving that we do, you're, you're trying to stay at 12 feet, basically. And certain things can make you go d- deeper. And as you start to go deeper, you compensate and you start to go up. But most people overcompensate. And so you go 17 feet and you go, whoa, I'm way too deep. And then you go, so you make these adjustments to your rig and to the way you're breathing. And all of a sudden you're at five feet. 
And you go, oh my gosh, I'm too close to the surface. I gotta go back down. So you, so we call it porpoising, up and down like a porpoise. I don't know if that happens with an aircraft, but it does. Yeah, it does, and it's not a good thing. <laughs> it's 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 not a good we, thing. We called it PIO, which is pilot induced oscillations. I love it. So, what I want to do when I detach is I want to oscillate. I want to PIO. I want to, and what do I mean by that? I want to go to 20,000 feet, 30,000 feet, but guess what? Then I want to go right back down to four feet, and I want to look at that problem, then I want to take a step back out to 12 feet, then I want to go to 100 feet. So I'm going to, I'm going to oscillate my altitude up, down, close, far, close, medium. So I'm going to oscillate, and then I'm not just going to go up and down in altitude, I'm going to maneuver around. I'm going to look at things from different vantage points. I'm going to see different angles. I'm gonna ask more questions. By the way, everything that I'm talking about physically, this is important, everything I'm talking about physically doing, I'm not just talking about physically doing it, I'm talking about mentally being able to go to different altitudes, seeing things from different perspectives. I'm gonna check my flank. I'm gonna check my six to see what I'm missing. Which is a habit that I formed. I would check the flank like when I was doing an immediate action drill with a rifle in my hand, I would always check the flank. It was an instinct and then I would check my six. It's an instinct that you get. You guys had to have something like that. Totally. Absolutely. And you're checking your flank, then you're checking your instrument, then you're checking this, then you're checking that, and you're just going through this cycle. And then I, I'm i gonna question uh, if my reality is even correct. <laughs> because I don't trust myself. And not, I don't mean that in a bad way. But I, I did a podcast with, uh, with Echo Charles a little while ago. I think it was an underground podcast. I was talking about the fact that we're all crazy. We're all crazy. And this is a true statement. Do you know what? So we're all insane, I think. is that, So the technical definition of insane means that what I think is reality, what I think is reality is not reality. That's someone that's insane. Well, here's what's going on. Check this out. Is the reality that Dave Burke sees the same reality that I see? Is it? No, there's differences. You see things a little bit differently. And, and look, we're probably as closely aligned as two humans can get as far as what reality looks like to us, but still my reality looks a little bit different. So therefore, you're a little bit insane and so am I because neither one of our realities is actual reality. The reality is a little bit different than what you see and what I see. So everybody's a little bit crazy, so I have that in my mind too. I'm thinking all the time when I think I know reality, I'm thinking to myself, well, I am actually a little bit crazy and my reality might be different than Dave's and it might be different than Leif's, and it might be different than whoever else we're working with. So I have that going on. And then on top of all that, I don't find conclusions in my thought patterns. I don't get to a point where I say, okay, there's the answer right there. I don't find conclusions. I just find a new perspective, and I don't think I'm done yet. I don't find a perspective and say, okay, this is reality right here. This is what it looks like. Now I can stop. Once I find a perspective, once I find that little section of reality, I'm immediately looking for another one. And so, and so I'm constantly running that, that through this loop. And I know we like running loops. I know we like running the OODA loop, which I'll talk about. And, but I've also got another loop that I'm running, like a little, a little combat leadership, extreme ownership loop that I'm running. So the OODA loop's real obvious. I'm running that one. I'm going to observe. And by the way, observe. What are we talking about? I'm talking about oscillating perspectives. So observe means moving around and looking and, and, and trying to see other perspectives. That's what observe is. Orient. How am I going to orient in a leadership situation? I'm going to ask questions. That's how I figure out where I am and how all this fits together. Then I'm going to decide what, what kind of decisions I'm gonna, am I going to make? I'm going to make small decisions because I'm gonna make them rapidly. And then I'm gonna act, what am I gonna take? I'm gonna take action, a small action based on a small decision. And by the way, when I take an action, my anticipation is that I'm actually wrong. I have at least 50% of my brain that's saying, you know what, you could be wrong right now, you could be wrong right now. So you better check yourself, and you better you better start running this this loop again immediately. I think there's people that make decisions and they think they're gonna be right. 98% of their brain thinks they're gonna be right. And I never think that. So that's the first loop that we're running. It's your basic OODA loop. 
and then I'm gonna run it again. And I know we don't have to run the whole thing. I know that this is, you can run part of it and you can you can backfill in other sections, but that's what I'm doing. But then I get this combat leadership, this kind of, this kind of extreme ownership loop that I'm gonna run, and it's real. Straightforward, and I, I and I got I got to tell you this. I made one adjustment to this as I was as I was coming here today. Um, this one adjustment because it's a big deal for me. The one adjustment that I made is uh, the first thing that I think about. The first thing that I think about is time. I am acutely aware of time. I pay attention to time. I am always tracking time because time is the thing that we can't adjust. We can't control it, we can't get it back. If we don't pay attention to time, it will bite us. So the primary thing that I'm thinking about in my head, well, let let me rephrase it. The first thing that I'm gonna think about, the first little checklist, I'm thinking, okay, how much time do I have? How much time do I have? What is the clock doing? And I have to revisit that all the time. I was thinking, you know, I was was brag. Is that the right word? Yeah, I brag that I, I was never late in the Navy for 20 years. How come? Because I'm always paying attention to time. Always thinking, hey, this is gonna take a little bit longer. Hey, I need to move a little bit quicker. Always paying attention to time. So time comes first. Then guess what comes next? Cover and move. Am I supporting my team and the teams around me? That's a little sanity check. It's a little loop, it's a little check. Am I supporting my team and the teams around me? Am I doing that? If I'm not doing that, I got a problem. The simple. Can I make this more simple? Can I make this situation that we're in, can I make it more simple right now? What about right now? Because things are trying to become more complex. That's what's trying to happen. I'm constantly saying, okay, how can I simplify this? Prioritize next to you. What's the priority right now? Here's, Here's a little additional information. What's the priority right now? What was it? And most important, what's it gonna be? I'm looking for the, what is going, I know what the priority is right now. I already told everyone what the priority is, but I'm not thinking about that anymore. Now I'm looking, what is the next priority gonna be? Cause I got the team, when I say, hey, we need to get in that building, good. Guys are moving out of that building. I'm not thinking about that anymore. I'm thinking, what's the next priority gonna be? Decentralized command. Check this out, here's a little, here's a little loop to run on yourself. What can I task out and to who? That's, we are in a firefight, we are in a critical situation, what can I task out? Stoner, go take that building right there, get on the rooftop. It's done. What can I get off my plate? Hey, Dave, take my radio man, go freaking get comms. Cool, that's not on my plate anymore. I'm not worried about it. Is the team gonna be able to act without me? Without communicating with me, without asking me for a decision? If I say, hey Dave, go make comms with with the aircraft, cool, but did I just empower him to do anything with that? Dave, go make comms with the aircraft, get the freaking, get the enemy shut out on the west over there. Cool, you don't need to talk to me again, cause I know what you're gonna do, you're gonna get bombs on target. After that, what am I doing? I'm thinking about my ego and I'm thinking about humility. Because wait a second, what what role is my ego playing in the decisions that I'm making right now? Am I putting the team before myself? Am I putting the mission before myself? Am I making a mistake, right? Am I making a mistake, am I wrong? What about my emotions? There's a little check. Are my emotions under control? Are my emotions impacting my decision-making process? Have you ever caught yourself in the act of making an emotional decision? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I know exactly, and, and I'm more than like thinking of the feeling of when you catch yourself. Yeah. Ooh, I was getting spun yeah. up there. Ooh, getting spun up there. Yeah. Didn't like that. Imagine if you're not running this loop in your head. You, you just bypass you're not, all you're these not even things. Check to see if you're you're doing bypassing it, yeah. all these things. You're not cover and move. You're not worried about any of these things. You're not keeping things simple. You're not prioritized next to you. You're not decentralized command. You're not paying attention to time. You're not paying attention to your emotions. Here's another one: perspective. Right? I'm constantly running 
my mind thinking, wait a second, what is Dave seeing right now? What is Leif seeing right now? What is the enemy seeing right now? Because I know Dave's in that building. I know Leif's over here. But what is it? What, so what does Leif see? What does Dave see? What does the enemy see right now? Oh, and by the way, is there an easier way to do what we're doing? I'm constantly acting myself that. Asking myself, hey, is there, another, is there an easier way that we could get this done? Wait, why are we ex- why are we exposing ourselves over here? Why are we why are we pouring our resources over there? Is there not an easier way to get it done? And then what about what about this question? And this is one that gets left off the plate all the time when it comes to leadership decision making. This one's so obvious. But but let me throw it at you. What's our mission? <laughs> What's our mission? What is our long-term strategic mission? And does whatever I'm doing right now support it? Because you end up making one small decision, another small decision, another small decision. All of a sudden, you're doing something that has nothing to do with the reason that you're out there. And then, guess what? And then I run that loop again. And I think this is the, I think this is the key part of my, quote, intuition. My leadership intuition. I think the key component of my leadership intuition is that I don't mentally stagnate. I don't get caught in a rut of thought. I, on the battlefield, you have to maneuver if you're going to win. You have to. You can't stay still. You can't get stagnant. And it's the same in life and business and in your head of making any kind of decision. If you get caught in one channel of thinking, you are going to get crushed. You are limiting your vision. You are, and when you limit your vision, you lim- limit your possible solutions, you live it, limit your possible decisions that you can make to win, you get caught in one channel of thinking. We, when uh, the GPS came out, when the GPS came out, I don't think I had, I didn't have the first, there was one prior one that was issued in the field, but I used a GPS system called, I think it was called a PSN8, PNS8, PSN8, satellite navigation something. Yeah, the precision navigation system, whatever. Eight. Yeah, PNS8, something like that. I, I think I know what you're talking about, yeah. So at the time, I don't know if they had the full sat, the full, um, what did they call it, satellite uh, constellation. They had the constellation yeah. of satellites up. I don't know if they had all of them yet, but there was like, there's supposed to be 24 satellites in the constellation, and they only had, I don't know, maybe they had 15. And each one of those satellites is on a different frequency of megahertz. So when you would turn on the GPS, that initial GPS only got one frequency at a time. And by the way, if you only know where one satellite is, you have no idea where you are. So that, that, that GPS, when you turned it on, it would search for a frequency. And it would tune itself to one frequency to listen. And, if, and it would wait for 20 minutes before it would shift to the next one. And sometimes, I mean, you couldn't even manually say, hey, here we are, where's the satellites? You couldn't do that. It had to find itself. And it would take, sometimes it would take four hours to, to figure out where it, where it was. Now, once it knew which satellites were up and which ones were in the constellation, then it could start maintaining and keep track and it would shift as one would fade, it would go to another one. Now on your phone and my phone, that those things are tracking, as soon as they're tracking 24 frequencies, it finds itself immediately, it always knows where it is because it's keeping all those channels open. Well, you gotta think of your mind like that. If you get stuck on one of these frequencies, if you get stuck on one of these channels, you're not going to know where you are. And it's not hard. Here's what's scary. It's not hard to get stuck. It's not hard to get stuck just, you know, whether it's your emotions, whether it's you get stuck in one perspective, whether it's you get, you don't pay attention to time. You get stuck in one of these ruts, one of these channels, and you're not going to be able to make good decisions. So that's the quote intuition. It's not intuition. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a superpower. I ran this loop. I ran these two loops basically. 
And if you run them quick and you don't get stuck in a rut, you're going to see more and you will be able to lead correctly.